Balance sheet of bank differs slightly from traditional companies. Once you understand, how do bank make money? It's easy to delve into balance sheet of bank. In this session, I will explain. How do balance sheet look for a bank? How to analyze each line item using schedule to balance sheet. It's good idea to understand balance sheet by reviewing actual company. I will show you balance sheet of HDFC Bank from March 2021 annual report. Let's get into details of assets side first. Here is how assets side of actual balance sheet looks like. It shows all the assets that company owns. Like note in traditional companies, I hope you noticed column with heading schedule. The main purpose of schedule to the financial statement is to further clarify breakup of each line item. You can go to annual report and review individual schedule to understand details of assets included on balance sheet. Let me explain each line item briefly. Starting with cash and balances with Reserve Bank of India. Every bank is required to maintain a certain minimum cash balance with the Reserve Bank. This refers to the cash balances with Reserve Bank and shown as assets. Next line item is balances with banks and money at call and short notice. Balances with banks refer to the balance in current or deposit account of another bank. Bank can request for this money when needed. Whereas money at call and short notice represents money borrowed for shorter duration at very low interest rate. When bank demands, borrower must pay back immediately. It helps bank in generating interest and maintain liquidity as well. Next important line item is advances. This is also referred as loan. Let's review corresponding Schedule 9 to understand the bank's advances or loan details. On balance sheet, loans to the customers are classified as an assets. This is because bank expects to receive interest and principal repayments for loans in the future. You will notice advances are usually the largest asset on balance sheet. Let's review few line items in detail. Starting with term loan. Term loan is a loan for a specific amount that has a specified repayment schedule and a fixed or floating interest rate. The example of term loan could be a business borrowing money to buy assets like factory, machines and so on. Next line item is secured by tangible assets. These are the loans secured by collateral. The collateral could be tangible assets like house, car, stocks and so on. They often have lower interest rates than unsecured loans. However, it's good to see large percentage of loan under secured by tangible assets. In case of failure to repay loan amount, bank can seize the assets used as collaterals. You will notice HDFC Bank has good percentage of loan secured by tangible assets. Next line item is unsecured loan. It includes personal loans, business loans and so on. These loans are not secured by any collateral. In case of default, the entire loan amount would become non-performing assets. When you see higher percentage of loan under unsecured loan, it's always a good idea to stay away from such banks. The next line item is advances in India. It includes several items like Loan to the priority sectors like agriculture and small businesses. You will notice large percentage of loan is classified as other. I would have preferred to see the details. Since you understand advances now. You might think bank can increase earning by increasing loan account. This is true statement but not completely. I covered provisions and contingency expenses during income statement. These expenses are related to loan that are defaulted. This is also called as non-performing assets or NPA. Hence, bank's profitability is not determined solely by loan growth. It's very important to select customers with stringent criteria. This will ensure lower percentage of NPA and higher profitability. Let's review other line items on assets side of balance sheet. 
The next line item is investments. You can review corresponding Schedule 8 to understand the bank's investment details. Just like individual, bank invest surplus money with expectation to seek higher return in future. Bank invest in various securities like stocks, debenture, bonds and so on. It also includes investment in subsidiaries and joint ventures. Next line item is fixed assets. You can review Schedule 10 to understand details of fixed asset and how they are recorded on balance sheet. Banks uses fixed assets to run its operation and generate income. It generally includes banks' premises, land, building, vehicles, furniture, computers, other office equipments, assets on lease and so on. All the fixed assets should be depreciated over its useful life. The next line item is other assets. Schedule 11 provides details of other assets. Any assets that cannot be classified into previously discussed category can be classified as other assets. It includes assets like any other interest accrued, security deposit for commercial and residential property, non-banking assets and so on. It's time to move on the capital and liabilities side of balance sheet for HDFC Bank. Here is how capital and liabilities side of balance sheet looks like. It shows all the liabilities that company owes. The schedule to the financial statement helps to further clarify breakup of each line item. You already know how to go to annual report and review individual schedule. This will help to understand details of liabilities included in balance sheet. I will review deposits and borrowings in detail. It forms the biggest portion of liabilities on balance sheet. Let's start with deposits. I will review Schedule 3 to understand bank's deposits in detail. You can refer to the annual report and here is Schedule 3 for deposits. On balance sheet, deposits are classified as liabilities. You will notice deposits are usually the largest liabilities on balance sheet. Let's understand the type of deposits now. There are three types of deposits. Demand deposit. Savings bank deposits. Term deposits. Let's start with demand deposit. In this type of account money can be withdrawn without prior notice. This is like current account and bank pays very minimum or no interest. Current account is generally open for business use. Next line item is savings bank deposits. It allows individual to deposit money, withdrawal and earn small amount of interest as well. All individual account holders usually have savings account. Let's move on to the next line item term deposit. This is a fixed deposit where money is invested for fixed period and interest rate. It allows withdrawal before maturity. However, the interest will be reduced by penalty amount. You might have frequently heard about term CASA deposit. Let's understand CASA deposit now. Deposit under current and savings account is called as CASA deposit. CASA deposit is the cheapest source of money available for bank since bank pays very minimum or no interest to account holder. Growing CASA deposit is always a good sign for bank. This means banks can get capital at very low interest and lend it to borrowers at high interest. This will result into higher net interest margin and overall profit. Let's move on to the next line on liabilities side of balance sheet. Borrowings. I talked about deposits in last slide. Think about, what if bank doesn't have enough deposits? Bank will not be able to grow loan account due to low liquidity or lack of deposits. The other option for bank is to take on debt to meet the loan demand and liquidity. Bank can borrow money from various sources like RBI other banks or by issuing bonds or debentures. You can review Schedule 4 to review details of bank's borrowings. Interest on borrowings is generally much higher than CASA or fixed deposits. Higher borrowings can reduce bank's profitability. 
Hence, it's very important for banks to increase its deposit and keep high cost borrowing as low as possible. This will ensure higher net interest margin and overall profitability. The last line item on liabilities side is other liabilities and provisions. Liabilities that do not get classified into previously discussed categories are classified as other liabilities and provisions. It refers to the liabilities related to unpaid interest, provisions for various reasons like replacing assets, pending bills, and so on. You can review Schedule 5 to review liabilities classified as other liabilities and provisions. Now it's time to understand capital and then reserve and surplus. Let's start with capital. Capital refers to the money collected by bank from public in exchange of ownership of shares. You can review Schedule 1 for the details of capital collected from public. Amount highlighted in green is the amount collected from shareholders in exchange of shares. You will notice the same amount is carried over to balance sheet as equity capital. The next line is reserve and surplus. You can review details under Schedule 2. Reserve and surplus refer to the profit accumulated over the years on balance sheet. You will notice the portion of profit is kept as various reserves. The reserves are funds set aside to pay future obligations. I will have separate session to go into details of various types of reserves. Let's understand balance sheet equation now. Bank's asset minus liabilities will give you shareholders equity. Shareholders equity is the sum of bank's capital and reserve and surplus. This is called as book value of a bank. Most of the bank's assets are financial assets recorded on balance sheet at market fair value. Hence, book value is very important concept to discuss during valuation of bank. It helps in estimating the fair price of stock. Thank you.